The final consideration that we're going to look at for mechanical design is stress. Now, this is very simply that if you have moving objects and if you have all this mobility, weight is being pushed down on parts. This means that certain joints, in a realistic sense, would only have a certain amount of stress and weight that they could potentially pull. One is that a joint might be too small or might just have too much attached to it. If you, for example, have a massive claw arm attached to your arm, but you only have a very small little joint holding it up, uh, this is not going to look realistic. Trying to hold that up and actually lift the arm would either jam the joint so that it just could not generate enough power to move it, or it would potentially just fall down and break the joint. With legs especially, this is something that you're going to have to think about. The mech is a very weighty object by itself, and it has to stand on its legs. If its legs don't feel like it can bear the weight, then you're going to essentially run into the issue that in the real life scenario, your mech would almost instantly collapse and break if it would try to do anything, or maybe even would break as it's trying to stand still. So to try and kind of address this, you want to look at designs and you want to kind of think of how they how the stress would impact some of these uh some of these limbs two big different ways that you can try and reduce stress on parts is to either make bulkier stronger joints that would be able to support more weight or to have support structures to distribute weight this would be things like hydraulics or support struts that would allow the weight not to have to all go down to the joint or go nowhere, but could potentially add extra support. Um, I will start off by showing you the fully rendered example, which I've taken to a pretty far level of finish just to demonstrate how different they can be and what the kind of end result of this could look like. Um, you can see that some of the shapes that you see in the cars, I took direct inspiration from, and then I used those for the body to have similar ideas of rounded stamped metal, um, I've looked a lot at the mechanical parts, having still rivets and a lot of like very square blocks and more rudimentary, which I've then used to fill out some of the mechanical part. And I've used a specific um, reference of this operator crane, this for cinema, is actually used for cameras, to kind of inform me how something like a between part like this could be, um, like where his arm connects to the shoulder, how that could be filled out. Um, you also see that I used the same kind of way that the pistons look in that reference to kind of inspire. And you see that the energy kind of battery block that I had at the back of the arm, I replaced with a diesel engine with some exposed mechanics because the exposed mechanics and the grunginess is part of the aesthetic I like about it. So I'm trying to specifically take that from it. Then as a counterpoint on the other ref board, this is the result that I come up with. Um, you can see here I've taken a very, very different approach, which is the real thing I want to point out with these, is just how different it can be based on what kind of rev board you choose to go with. Um, you can see here that I've been a lot cleaner with the shapes. There's a lot less noise in the shapes, since this kind of design aesthetic would want to reduce a lot of this noise. You see that I've taken some of the like sharp, angular aerodynamic shapes as inspiration. You see that I've cleaned up some of the mechanics. Um, and the, I've taken direct inspiration from some of the engine parts that I've seen where it has a specific ways of having bracing structures and breakup that I've then copied. So another thing I want to point out for that 